So I've got my black cardstock ready and in the kit you will get a cutting list. So if you don't pick up on the page sizes here, don't panic. So pick what cardstock you want to use and I'm going to show you two different pages you can put into this album. Just your normal pocket page and a photo wallet page too. And it's a bit like a pick and mix. You're going to need four pages in total. So I've got two pages here. If you wanted to make four of these, go ahead. If you wanted to make four wallet ones, you can do that too. But I thought I'd show you a little bit of variety. So I'm going to grab my trimmer. And each page takes two pieces of cardstock. So if you're going to make the pocket page, you'll need to cut nine inches by six and a quarter. So again, nine inches by six and a quarter. So all these bits here, you can use then just glue on three sides to make your pockets and things for decorating later on. So it's not going to go to waste. So once I've got my two pieces cut, I'm going to put the long edge, the nine inch edge, along the top of my scoreboard. And I'm going to score at half an inch on both of them. So you see, if you were doing four or four pages of this, you just keep going and do eight of these. That'd be nice and quick. So I've got my two pieces, which are exactly the same. I've got my wider sticky paws, which is the tape from the Cool Cats. And I'm just going to put it inside that half inch line. This tape is great because you don't need to go get your scissors or anything, you just place it down and you tear it off and it's still nice and strong. And when you put it, you do get two different sizes, you've got a slimmer one as well. I think that's a quarter of an inch, but I'm not quite sure. Now I'm just going to uh, fold over and take my score tool. So as I'm doing the edge there, I'm also burnishing down that double-sided tape. So I'm going to take off a little bit of the tape and I just fold it at a 45 degree angle like that. I'm going to flip this one over so my flap is on the bottom. Well, actually, I'm going to turn it on the side. But what you want are your two flaps on the opposing bits. And then you're just going to line up your corner. Now, I'd line up this bottom right first because that's where my tape is still covered. So when it's in place, I can still move everything where I want it. So the last corner I want to work on is this one up here. There we are because that's where the tape is exposed. Now a nice neat tip for you, if you find that tricky, grab your scoreboard, line it up, and use the edges to help you to keep things straight. So you can fold it back. Your scoreboard is actually helping you And there we go. That's your pocket page done. So we've now got two of our pocket pages done. So if you wanted to make four of them, as I said, go ahead. But if you wanted to add a bit of variety, now I liked doing this. I like doing it in the center. Like so. So you've got the two bits opening up 
and I just think it's a nice middle for your album. But equally, you could do four of them and have one wallet on each page facing up. A bit like the Instagram album I made a while back. So let's make our photo wallet one. Now again, you will need two pieces of your cardstock. Let's grab our trimmer in. Now I'm using A4 cardstock, which is eight and a quarter inches wide. So the only cut I need to do is eight and a half inches. So that's the height of our album pages. Again, I've got a piece there now for my pockets for later on. And that's all I do with that one. Now the next one, I'm gonna cut down first because I'm gonna actually use this bit for my spines later on. So I'm gonna cut this at four and a half. By nine and a half. So this long piece, keep that safe. That'll come for our spines later on. This little piece could be a tag or something later on. So let's move our trim out the way and bring back my scoreboard. So I want that big squarish one at eight and a quarter along the top. And I'm gonna score it at six and a quarter. And then the other one, I'm gonna score it half an inch. That's up to you, you can either do nine inch or just turn around and score it half again. Either way works. And that's all the scoring for the wallet page. So on this one, we're just gonna fold that flap back. And with our pocket, we're gonna, oh, let's put the tape on first so I can burnish. So again, a sticky pause, the wider one. So when I'm folding it back, I'm actually burnishing the tape down as well. nice and flat and again you can just stick it straight on or bring in your scoreboard let's flatten down that page so I folded my tape in a little bit out and on the other side and then just burnish them down and what you've then got is a pocket and then a flap coming over to make it a finished wallet shape and then at this point, if you wanted to use your whisker dies or something, well, if you're gonna use the dies, I would have cut it before sticking the pocket on. But if you're just using your punches, just use it now. And there we go with our two photo wallet pages. As I said, I think it would look really nice if you just had four of these as pages as well. Okay, so we've got our four pages. But obviously, we need a spine now to stick them onto. So that long piece I had, I'm going to bring that back. And I'm going to cut it at eight and a half. And 
and the first one is two and a quarter and the second one is one and three quarters let me see if I've got enough here yeah now because you've done two of those um, wallet pages you'll have the bits left if you've done those um, normal like pocket uh, pages you will need to use another sheet probably and that's at eight and a half so I've got my scoreboard ready so I'm gonna take it so the long part is going down my board I'm gonna score it at half an inch so I'll just make my taping up later on easier but I want a nice thin uh, fold over bit. Don't know what you'd call it, that hinge space. So I'm only going up a quarter of an inch. So half an inch and three quarters. Turn it around. Half and three quarters. I'm going to do the same on this one. Half three quarters, turn it round, half, three quarters. So I'm now just going to fold the two lines in the centre. And the same with this one. I'm going to fold those two in the centre. And those are our hinges. Now that is your traditional hinge. And what you would do then is just put your page onto your spine like so. But because we've got that extra score line, what we're going to have is a little bit of a flexible hinge which will help your album to fold flat, to lay flat when you're looking through it. So just fold them backwards. Obviously this is where your page is going to go so I'm going to fold them in both directions. So I'm training my cardstock to fold in both directions. That's the fiddlier one, the smaller one. And then this one's slightly easier, just because you've got more space in the middle. wider one. And you can see the shape there and the reason we did it both ways so that that hinge will fold both directions. So now I'm just going to add some tape onto the back of this one. So between, between those two centre fold lines I'm going to use my slimmer one then as well down there. And again, the slimmer one is so handy because it fits that quarter of an inch gap. Now, be this is very, very strong tape, but because it's at my spine and it's going to have extra weight and it's going to be moving all the time, I am going to add a touch of glue as well. So that tape will hold it there for now. This glue then will just keep it in place. So you flip your spine over and we're just going to place it down the centre. There you go, 
percent happy with that. So let's finish it down. And now I need to attach some tape so that my pages will adhere. So I'm just going to put it into those half inch spaces we made. Then we got to the center, so make sure you turn everything over. And the last one. There we go. And just to help the pages go in, I'm just going to trim off from the edge to my score line. You can see it there. I'm just going to cut it off like that. That'll just help my page slide over a little bit easier. I'm going to do that on every single one. So just to that score line. So not, not to the middle where you've attached everything, just to that score line. It's probably the easiest one to see on. Just to that first score line. And I'm going to repeat it, so turn it over, just to the score line, to the score line, and the last one. Move all those triangles in. So that's our spine, all ready to go. So I'm going to bring back my cover. Make sure he covers the right way up. Made that mistake before. We put some tape on the back of our spine earlier. And again, because we're going on to this Arca tape, you really do want some nice strong glue. So some nice book binding glue, your acrylic glue. And we've got those creases where we folded the spine earlier. Folded the cover, sorry. I'm going to leave a nice equal gap top and bottom. So I'm holding up my whole spine together like this. And I'm going to be placing it down. And because we've got that glue, we can just move it slightly. Should we need to? There we are. And burnish it down. So that's the spine done. And now all we need to do is add our pages. So make sure you know what order you're going to go in. So one, then I'm going to use the back of that wallet one, the front flap facing, so we've got that nice pocket, and then just the normal pouch one in the back. Oh, got some spill out from the glue. It will rub off, so I'm not panicking too much. So I'm going to take off my tape. I'm going to run some glue down this edge, just so I can move it a little bit later if I need to. And then some glue here just to close that pocket. So this is my back one. So I'm going to go for my last page now. So you're going to open up your page. I'm going to lay it down on your cover. Make sure it's nice and straight. And then press it down. Now because we've got that flexi hinge, you've actually got a little bit of extra uh, movement in there. So that's fine. It'll help you a deer or line it a little bit better. So again, I'm just going to put some glue there. So what you've got to make sure is you don't go over that score line. Otherwise, your page won't flex. So now I'm going to get my third page. Now this is the one with the pocket coming this way. I'm opening up sliding on 
So I'm coming up to that score line, but not touching it. Lining it up and pressing it down. Yeah. Now my third one, which is actually page two, because I'm working from the back. So should I be calling my second or my third? I'm not sure. This is the one now. I want those uh, wallet ones opening up together in the center. So I want my flap facing down this time. Slide it over. There we go. And then our last one. We've got our glue to the back of this. It's not the end of the world, you can do it afterwards. Again, open up, and you see those cut off triangles just help to slide it over because those triangles sort of guide it to where it's needed. Just lift it up again. And Push it up to that score line. And attach. So there we have our Merlin page all finished, ready for decorating. So you've got four pages, and I said you could pick and mix. You could have four of these, four of these whatever combination you want. But that then is your basic Merlin album. So if you want some ideas on how to fill it up, this is based around my um, Abigail and my trifold folios. So if you have a look at the pages there, you may get some ideas on how to put, add pockets or flaps. But I'm hoping to have more pages coming when I have some time in the future. But I wanted to show you how easy it was to make just your basic album. And as I said, it's maximizing your 12 by 12 papers because to cover both these pages, it's six and a quarter wide. So you just cut your paper at six inches. So you'd get it both pages covered with your one sheet, but because you're cutting your paper at eight and a quarter inches tall, you'd also get a nice spare bit from the top, which you can use to cover the flaps and things like that. So really economical with your papers as well. So thanks for watching. I hope you like the kit. And if you want to purchase one, if you head to my Facebook group, Paper Crafting with Paul, there might be a little special offer in there for you. As well, go to the Facebook group for Cool Cats, which is just called Cool Cats. Again, I'll link these in the description below. And I look forward to seeing your version of the Merlin albums. And remember to come and share with us. If you enjoyed that, please click that thumbs up or click that subscribe button. That will really help too. So until next time, we leave you there.